Good morning, everyone. We're so glad you have joined us for worship this morning. I want to remind you to check in on Facebook. Um, tell us how many are worshiping with you and how many or where you're worshiping from. <laughs> I also want to remind everyone that we are looking forward to next Sunday. We will be gathering again together here in the church, and I know the team is way excited. We're so glad to see faces again. So if you're comfortable with coming to worship with us, come and worship with us on Sunday morning. We will see you soon. Join us today with our worship and our first song, King of My Heart. good Lord we sing your praises amen let's lift this next song up and sing the beautiful name of Jesus name it is 
name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. We do have a couple of prayer concerns this morning. We want to um, be praying and lift up the family of Dave Waldron. He passed away earlier this week. So please be praying for him, for his family. Lord, in your mercy. Also for a friend of um, Jeff and Trish Walker, Phyllis Caparelli. She is, uh, has some health issues, so we want to lift her up. Lord, in your mercy. Also, we want to be praying for our congregation as we come back together to this place of worship and meet again for worship. We're going to pray for God's peace and comfort. Lord, in your mercy, bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come before you and lift up all of our, our concerns, Lord. We know that you, are, you hear us and you are with us. I pray, Lord, for comfort for those who are hurting, those grieving and going through loss. For those that are having health issues, Lord, may you bring answers and bring comfort and peace. As we come back together, Lord, in this place, be with us, Jesus, and give us peace. For all the, that is going on in our country, Lord, we lift up all those to you who are dealing with the hate. Lord, may they learn to turn to you that you are the only answer. 
We know, Lord, that you are working all things for our good, and we give you thanks. We come together now and pray as you have taught us to pray. Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I do want to remind you to continue to support the church financially. You can always mail in your offering, drop it by the mailbox outside of the church, or use the online feature that is always available. And join us in our next song. As we pray for the Holy Spirit to come and be with us as we worship. Spirit, you 
Thanks, Lord, for your presence. Today's scripture is out of the book of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 17. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. everyone. I am so excited that this is our last week of social distance church. Next time we're all here, I'll get to see faces out there in front of me, and I am so excited for that to happen. It's been so quiet around here. It just feels like it's Groundhog Day. It's just Sunday every day this week. But anyways, last Sunday when we were here, we were talking about the Holy Spirit, and I brought a flashlight with me so that we could help to understand that the batteries inside powered the light just the same as the Holy Spirit inside of us gives us the power and the strength we need to shine God's light out into the world around us. Now, the Holy Spirit is sometimes a topic that's a little bit difficult for us to understand. We know who God is. We know that God is our Father in heaven who is always there loving us and he's waiting for us to join him someday. We know that Jesus was the Son of God that was sent down here to earth to teach us so many lessons and he saved us from our sins when he died on the cross for us. But the Holy Spirit isn't always quite that easy to understand. It's hard to think about something that's sent to us from God to dwell within us. So lots of times the dove is used as the symbol for the Holy Spirit. Now I sometimes have some silly thoughts like there's a dove flying around inside of me and I think a little bit about that and I think, hmm, shouldn't that tickle if there's something going on inside of me like that? And I imagine that God probably has a great big old face palm whenever I have those crazy thoughts. The truth is the Holy Spirit is sent to us straight from God. It's amazing to think that God gives us a gift because he always wants us to find our way to him. He wants us to have a guide to help us through this life. I wonder sometimes what makes any of us worthy of having such an incredible gift. So I was thinking about my kids a little bit. And poor Bella, she's not just the youngest at my house. She's the smallest by a lot. And sometimes there's things that she just can't do because she's either not quite big enough or maybe it's just something that she hasn't learned because she's not old enough yet. So when I can't be there and she needs my help, I have to tell her that she needs to go and ask one of her siblings. 
Well, Carson and Lauren, they're normally there and they have the skills they need that they can help her. Lauren, she's usually there and she can help her with almost anything. And well, Carson, he's good to reach things on the top shelf. Well, <laughs> they help her out because they love me and they respect me so much and I told them to, of course. And they might not always think that they wanna help her, but they do because they love her and it's the right thing to do. So they're gonna do what she needs. Each of us is gonna have moments in our lives where we're gonna struggle just like Bella does sometimes. We're going to need help to find our way and to do the things that we need to do in our lives. The Holy Spirit is here for us because God knows that we needed a friend to give us help and strength and comfort in those kind of times. The Holy Spirit is here for us because it is exactly what God wanted. We are worthy and deserving because when we make that decision to be a follower of Jesus, we give our lives to him and we commit ourselves to living our lives in a way that honors and glorifies him. Being a follower of Jesus doesn't mean that our lives are always going to be filled with rainbows and roses. We are absolutely going to have some hard times. We will experience loss and sadness and hurt and pain, but we will never, ever have to face it alone. The Holy Spirit is at work inside of us to give us the tools that we need to get through those difficult times. I don't know about you, but it sure does make me feel better to know that I have a friend that has my back all the time and wants me to be the very, very best me that I can be. Now, I'm excited for each and every one of you to have your own experiences with the Holy Spirit where you'll start to feel the Holy Spirit leading you. Maybe it will be that gentle nudge that just encourages you to do the right thing. Maybe it will be an answer that comes to you out of nowhere and you'll just know it was sent to you from God. I pray that in those moments when the Holy Spirit leads me that I just continue to feel closer and closer to God. I sure hope that every single one of you will have that experience too. Go ahead and pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us so much that you've sent the Holy Spirit to live in us. God, we know that we aren't strong enough to always do what's right by ourselves. We are grateful for the Holy Spirit to help guide our paths so that we can keep our steps in line to get to you. Amen. Okay, sorry about that long pause there. I was stepping up here to uh, follow Sam, and Sam, I was about to tell you, hey, great job. Thank you so much for that word. Um, that inspiring word for um, children. You know, we say it's the steps of faith for the children, but it's all, yeah, it's always great. And I think that um, on this one, you know, we were, <laughs> was, we were talking about this going, it's the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and it took us a little while to go, Holy Spirit, what do you want us to say about this? Um, and Sam Atha had no idea what I was going to preach on. Um, and so many of the things that you said um, are things that the Holy Spirit has led me to preach and to teach on also. And I love that whenever God confirms, um, confirms that. But anyway, as I was walking up, I noticed that on my mic, uh, microphone pack, the batteries were dead. And so a little bit of awkward silence there for you. Well, listen, I, I just want to say it again. Diana shared with you, uh, we are so excited to be returning with you and have you coming back to the service again, um, to have, it, have you coming back to this, the, our facilities again, to the building again, to worship with us. Um, there'll be a few changes. It's going to seem a little bit different. It might seem a little bit weird. I, I don't know. Um, and we, we just want you to know that if you're if you're still uncomfortable being around crowds or whatever, we completely support you and we understand and, and we want you to stay home and stay safe. And uh, if, if you're out and about anyway and you're like, hey, I'm ready to get back to, I'm ready to get back to church and ready to come back to the facility, um, we'll practice safe distancing the best that we can here. And uh, we're not putting every possible, every possible rule in place because we really determined, as I was discussing that with some of our church leaders and our staff, to do that would just make things completely uncomfortable and I think cause a really bad experience to do that. So be on the lookout in your email for some, uh, just some guidelines and some things that you can expect to be uh, different whenever you return. But anyway, we're excited to have you back next Sunday on June 14th. 
Well, <clears throat> you remember before this COVID thing happened, remember the good old days when we did get to mix and we got to mingle and we got to get out and we got to go to church together and we got to go to games together. In fact, I've talked to several uh, baseball moms who, who are really missing uh, the tan on their feet <laughs> because of the baseball games. And, um, but we got, to, we got to go out. We got to, to, to get into opportunities to, to hang out with other people. I really miss those. But I was thinking about that times when you're out and about and you get to meet someone new. For the very, very first time, you get to meet them. And if it's anything like most of the time, whenever I meet somebody new, the, uh, you're going to exchange names. I am, yeah, who are you? Tell me, you know. And you might just tell a little bit about the history. And I always, I always probably ask people where they're from. And, um, or if I meet somebody here in town, how long have you been in Ulysses? No, don't assume everybody's been here all their lives. And um, so you might talk about something that you have in common. So if you meet somebody at a ball game, your kids play ball together, and you might just talk about some of that. I've talked to several of the, the dads and the parents from teams Levi has played on. But sometime in the conversation, it's really a natural thing for this question to come up. Well, tell me what you do. What do you do? Tell me, tell me what you do, right? And, and it's just one of those things that we ask as we're getting to know people. For the past two weeks, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. A couple of weeks ago, we were in Acts 1-8 when Jesus told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the gift, for the Holy Spirit that was going to be sent. And whenever the Holy Spirit comes and fills you, you're going to be filled with power and power to be witnesses for Christ, a witness for God. And then last week was... Pentecost Sunday, and we spoke out of Acts chapter 2 on that day that the Holy Spirit actually did come to the church, and it filled all of the believers who were there, and wonderful and amazing things happened, and Pentecost is really widely considered the birthday of the church, the beginning of the church. Not the beginning of all believers, but the beginning of Christ's church. And if um, if, you, if you were tuned in with what Samantha said, the Holy Spirit can be one of those topics, one of those subjects that, that may, may be challenging to navigate. I know that I, I, I grew up learning a lot about Jesus, a lot about God, a lot about the Bible, but not a whole lot about the Holy Spirit. It wasn't until later on in life that I had some people disciple me about the Holy Spirit. But if, if you don't know a lot about the Holy Spirit... It's a good question to ask, just like whenever you meet somebody new. Well, what do you do? And so you can say that to the third person of the Godhead. You can say that to the third person in the Holy Trinity. Holy Spirit, what do you do? And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today are the works of the Holy Spirit. What is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives? And before I dive in, I do want to tell you this. I want to tell you that it, it, it kind of reminds me of a snowflake. Again, it's, it's a little bit difficult to explain, but um, a, a snowflake is, is always cool, it's refreshing, it's beautiful. Uh, we may feel like the snowflakes don't come at the best timing. I know if you've had much experience with the Holy Spirit, maybe you don't feel that the timing is your timing. Um, but the Holy Spirit's work is always pure, but it's unique, just like a snowflake. And uh, we might experience one aspect of the Spirit's work, but we might experience it in different ways. You don't have to experience the work of the Holy Spirit the same way I experience the work of the Holy Spirit, nor do I have to experience it like you do. It's unique, it just, just like a snowflake, but it's always pure. Um, one thing that we need to be reminded of, and, and always keep this in mind before we move on, is this. While our individual experiences may differ, one thing is always true in the Holy Spirit's work. The Holy Spirit always brings glory to God, not to us. That's, that's not the work of the Holy Spirit to, to lift you. Now the Holy Spirit will, will find out that the Holy Spirit does work in our lives and, and helps us in so many ways and lifts us up, but never to glorify. The Holy Spirit's work is always to glorify God. So we've got that out of the way. Let's jump in and find out more about the work of the Holy Spirit. As I was praying about this, and, and I always pray and say, God, what do you want us to learn? What, what do you want to speak to us um, through this message? What, what do you want me to share about the Holy Spirit? 
And, and there are so many teachings on, examples of, and the stories where people have experienced the work and the power of the Holy Spirit. So, what to share? What, what to teach? I, I could tell you, I could just go through this, this uh, text throughout the Scripture and, and a lot through the New Testament and say that by our disobedience we can grieve the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul tells the church at Ephesus and speaks to us. That our disobedience grieves the Holy Spirit. Luke 11 tells us that the Holy Spirit is a gift God is pleased to give us. God wants to give us the Holy Spirit. God wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. We can look at Romans 8 and we can discover how the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness, helps us in our prayers and if I were to be able to see your hands and ask for a show of hands how many of you could use some help in your prayer life and many of us would say yeah I think so I could use some help in my prayer life well the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit helps us in our prayer life helps us in our lives Galatians 5 is about the fruit of the Spirit that whenever we walk in the Spirit of God that's a capital S when we walk in fellowship with the Spirit of God that there are things that are manifest in our life goodness, gentleness, self-control right? peace, patience, kindness all of those things are manifest in our life in Ephesians chapter 1 reminds us that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit God, that, that doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of all that the Spirit can do and all that the Spirit does. And so you can tell just by that that there are many, many options, many different things that, that we need to learn about the Spirit's work. But we only have a few minutes, and here's where I believe God is leading us. To take a look at just a few verses from the Gospel of John, the passage that Diana read earlier from chapter 14. In those few verses of Jesus sharing about the coming of the Holy Spirit, there's a theme that arises that, that I believe that you'll be able to see. And the theme is this, in and through. In and through. What I mean by that is we'll discover how the Holy Spirit's work is done in us and done through us. I'm going to ask if Jeff will put that passage of Scripture up one more time. And we're going to read just those couple of verses. This is from John 14, verses 15 through 17. Jesus begins, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Isn't that awesome? <clears throat> this is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive <coughs> Excuse me, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because why? He abides in you and he will be in you. He abides with you and he will be in you. Powerful words there from Jesus um, speaking about the Holy the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Jesus spoke of the Holy Spirit as a gift who, who would be advocate and comforter. It depends on what translation um, your Bible um, uses. And we use the NRSV most of the time here. The word that you just saw on screen was the New Revised Standard Version. It's the one that I use most. I believe the scholarship is very, very good in it. But you may have another translation that, that gives you another word besides advocate and might use the word comforter in there. And, and those words come out of this one Greek word that John uses to talk about the Holy Spirit as Jesus was telling His disciples about it. And that word is parakletos. You may um, have heard the word paraclete before. Uh, it's not the bird. It's not a parakeet. It's the paraclete. It's a Greek word describing the Holy Spirit. And it's only John who uses the word parakletos to describe the Holy Spirit. And, and there's several meanings of it. One of the meanings of that word is, is the work of the Holy Spirit is called alongside to assist. Called alongside to assist. Hey, you think about it, think about it like this, that the Holy Spirit does not work instead of us, the Holy Spirit does not work in spite of us, but the Holy Spirit works in us and through us, comes alongside to assist. 
And, and we know that the Holy Spirit, because of what Jesus says, will abide with us. Whenever you hear that word abide, it means that the Holy Spirit literally makes His home with us. And, and I know it can seem like maybe whenever that meaning says comes alongside, it might give you the feeling that the Holy Spirit is like this external um, and the Holy Spirit certainly does work around us, but, but never lose sight of what Jesus taught us, that the Holy Spirit abides in us and, and will work in us, okay? Don't, don't ever forget that. But the Holy Spirit comes alongside to assist us. That word also can be translated as comforter. And I've prayed this one a bunch. I bet you have too, that you've prayed, Holy Spirit, I need comfort. In times that are difficult, in times that are very sad, we pray for God's help. We pray for God's comforting Holy Spirit to be with us whenever we are afflicted, when we're hurting, whenever we're sad, when we're lonely. And we pray that because we know that the Holy Spirit is the comforter. But whenever we think about comfort, and I'm going to tell you, this is how I've prayed this. Um, when we think about comfort, we think about soothing, and we think about consolation, about consoling um, one. And, and that's how I thought. I said, it's Holy Spirit, console me. Holy Spirit, soothe my, my pain. Ease, ease things that are, that are troubling me right now. But this one's really excited, because, exciting because John uses this word Greek, and it has even a deeper meaning then our word comforter is, is translated in. It literally means this. It literally means with strength. With strength. And think about that. When we are at our darkest times, when we are at the most difficult and saddest times in our lives, we can call upon the Holy Spirit to give us strength. The Holy Spirit gives strength or, or brings strength to us so we can bravely face and we can navigate those toughest times of our life. Isn't that powerful? I, I mean, it's not just patting you on the head, patting you on the back, saying, baby, it's going to be okay. <laughs> it's going, everything's going to be all right. But the Holy Spirit moves alongside, abides with us, lives in us, forever, is always with us whenever we cry out to the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit gives us strength so we can navigate those most difficult times. You may have been asked this, and I know I've been asked this several times um, as, as a pastor, is people ask for prayers whenever they go through sad times, hard times, rough times in their lives. And so I do pray for them. And I, and I pray for the Holy Spirit to comfort them and be with them. And there's so many times that I hear them say something like this. After that time has passed, after they've gotten through that really difficult moment and that difficult period in their life, they'll say something like, well, I just don't know how we got through that. I, I just, I, boy, I don't know how we, how we made it through that time in our lives. I don't know how we got through those dark times in our life. And, and I'm thinking, I do. I know exactly how you got through that. You prayed, we prayed, and we asked the Holy Spirit to bring you through that. That's how you got through that. That's how you made it, is because the Holy Spirit delivered on His promises. The Holy Spirit ab abides with you and lives in you and is with you forever and gives you strength, moves alongside you to give you strength through those times in your life. So uh, listen, next time you pray for the comfort of the Holy Spirit and you navigate through those difficult times no matter what they are and you get on the other side of them, don't say, I just don't know how we got through there. I just don't know how we made it. Say, I have, praise God we made it because of God's Holy Spirit giving us strength to move through those times. That's powerful. Whenever you really can dive in and you see the deeper meaning and, and you see how John um, tells the, the real story about what Jesus was saying, it's powerful, powerful um, words for us as believers to know that the work of the Holy Spirit does all these things, right? And finally, the word advocate, because that's another um, way that that parakletos is translated. The word advocate comes from that same Greek word and it signifies one who represents you at court and stands at your side to plead your case. And, and get this, the Holy Spirit always stands on the word of truth. 
always stands. Well, what does that mean, Brother Todd? Well, it, listen, it, it means this. It means whenever you're being attacked in your mind, just for one example, when you're being attacked in your mind that you're not worthy, and, and I would just dare to say most of you watching, if not all of you watching, have had a thought that has come against you that 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 stirs up insecurity, that makes you think that you are not good enough, that you are not worthy enough. There's a thought that comes through your mind that hinders you from stepping forth to speak the Word of God or to do something that God needs you to do because you're still feeling guilt from your past. You're still feeling shame from your past. You're still feeling that you don't live up a life worthy of serving God. And I know, I know this attacks so many people because, listen, that's the enemy's work to pull us out, to disqualify us. And guys, that's the enemy's work, not the Holy Spirit's work. That, that's not the work of God. You have the advocate, the Holy Spirit, as your attorney, as your counselor, in the highest courts of God. Let me, let me explain why that is so powerful. Whenever those accusations come, right, and, and you, you, you want to do something for God, you need to do something, and those thoughts of insecurity, those thoughts of guilt, those thoughts of shame, those thoughts that were, the, those memories of your sin come to haunt you, right? Guess what? You might be guilty of those things. I mean, have you ever felt guilt and shame from something that you actually done? You know why you feel that? Is because you've done it and you're guilty. But, but here's the truth. And remember I said the Holy Spirit always stands on the side of truth. When we confess our sins, Christ is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. It, so think of, think of it like this. Sin causes us to fall down. It knocks us down, right? We've used those terms before. I, I just, I, I keep falling, right? And the Holy Spirit picks us back up. Jesus forgives us our sins. And, and that literally means that He sets us up right again before God. And, and so whenever that enemy comes in and tries to remind you of your past, the Holy Spirit steps in with the word of truth. And, and whether you're guilty of that or not, do you understand the Holy Spirit is now your counselor, is now your advocate, and says they're not guilty anymore. That crime's been paid for. That sin has been covered by the blood, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus. You ought to be screaming hallelujah at your screens right now. There is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is our advocate for this. Our Holy Spirit is one who can speak against the enemy, who can bring us peace in our minds. That's powerful. That's powerful for you. That's powerful for me. Listen, I, I've been a pastor. I don't know how many years I've been a pastor. I still get attacked in my mind from time to time. I, I still get attacked and, and to think that... that how could I be worthy to be somebody's spiritual leader? How could I be worthy to speak on behalf of the creator of the universe? How, how can it be? How, how, could God, how could God use this to do something so divine and, and so amazing? And I, I mean, I can get attacked by that and go, Todd, you're not worthy. Todd, you don't live the life that, that's worthy of this calling on your life. But when the enemy steps in to attack me in my mind, the advocate has the final word. The Holy Spirit has the final word. It says, you're not worthy because of anything that you've done. You're worthy because of everything Christ has done. You're not worthy because you can live a sinless life on your own. You're worthy because Christ has loved you and has paid for all of your sins. That's, that's an amen right there. That's an awesome amen right there. The Holy Spirit will make your case for you. And that is powerful. See, the, when, when the enemy comes in, the enemy is trying to make us um, not engage in the work God has prepared for us to do. He, he tries to make us busy. He tries to make us um, regret. He, time, he tries to put us in shame. Whatever, whatever he does... Um, the enemy doesn't want us doing God's work. But listen, God has prepared works for each one of us to do and has never ever intended for us to do them in our own power. 
So especially in those times whenever maybe you're not feeling like you, you have what it takes to do the work God has called you to do, you're in a perfect place to say, Holy Spirit, I need you. I need your power, not my own. I need your inspiration, not my own. I need you to give me strength because I don't have it on my own. I need you to come alongside me and help me because I can't do it on my own. We don't have to understand that the Holy Spirit wants to work in our lives. And if we truly want to experience the joyful life intended for all of God's children, then we must live in harmony with God's Word and the teachings of Jesus. Let me say that again. If we want the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and we truly want to experience the joyful life intended for God's children, then we must live in harmony with God's Word in harmony with the teachings of Jesus. Think of it like this. Understand the Spirit of God is the Spirit of truth. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of truth. And the Spirit of truth uses the Word of truth. The Word of truth is God's words to teach us and to guide us into the will and work of God. That's why it's so important for us to be in harmony with God's Word because the Holy Spirit is in harmony with God's Word. As you begin to grow in your knowledge and your word, uh, uh, knowledge of the Word and your faith in Christ, you're going to learn more about the Holy Spirit. You're going to begin to experience the Holy Spirit. We had a great conversation in our Bible study this week about the Holy Spirit. And, and, and I asked this question, how have you experienced the Holy Spirit, or how has the Holy Spirit manifest itself in um, in you? How, how have you experienced that? And and many people will say it was through I felt a nudge, something that I knew was leading me, was guiding me to do something that I knew God wanted me to do. My mom used to say this: "You just know it in your knower." <laughs> You just you just know it in your knower. And and do you know that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is a gift of knowledge, is a gift of knowing. And, and so maybe you didn't get it from a piece of paper. Maybe you didn't get it from a spoken word. You got it because the Holy Spirit dwells in you, abides in you, and the Holy Spirit is in harmony with God's Word and leads you into God's work and God's will. And so sometimes you can just know what you need to do and you just know it in your knower and that's the Holy Spirit who brings that knowing. But as you begin to read the Word of God, you'll see other places where the Holy Spirit begins to work in the lives of people. You will read Scriptures and you will discover that the Holy Spirit will, will just make them come to life for you. You will begin to experience the Holy Spirit in different ways. And again, it doesn't have to be my experience. It doesn't have to be somebody else's experience. But it will always glorify God and it will always line up with the Word of God. So as you grow, you're, you're going to discover that the Holy Spirit's work is going to be beautiful and it's going to be unique as you experience. As you experience the Holy Spirit's work. So today, here's, here's what I'm praying for you. Here's what I hope that you will pray for yourself. It is that you will grasp, you will grasp that the Holy Spirit is a gift from the Father, that the Father truly wants to give to each one of you. You've already been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Remember, to even say Jesus is Lord, that's only by the Holy Spirit. At, at your confession of Christ, at your baptism, the Holy Spirit seals us. But now, now it's time for the church to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So understand that whenever the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit wasn't just poured out on everybody who was worthy of it. The Holy Spirit was poured out upon people, on disciples, on men and women who, who are just humans. The Holy Spirit wants to fill each one of us believers. You also need to understand, and I want you to grasp that the Holy Spirit is, is an advocate, our advocate, who stands next to us, who is there to assist us. I want you to understand the Holy Spirit is our comforter, who leads us and guides us to live joyful lives, peaceful lives, and who gives us strength, lifts us up, gives us strength 
in difficult times. One of the most powerful things I ever heard about our relationship with God came through uh, a couple of guys who call themselves the skit guys. And we've shown some of their videos and maybe you've seen them. But they are really gifted at telling the, uh, telling the story and telling truths about um, God through, through drama, through skits, through um, humor, through comedy, and through dra- uh, different, different types of, of media. But there's this one skit where one of them is praying and he says, God, I've let you down in so many ways. And, and the response is this, hey, that's, that's not the way this relationship works. Your job is not to hold me up. My job is to hold you up. As we learn what the Holy Spirit's work is in our life, to, to give strength, the Holy Spirit's to hold us up. So I want you to understand that um, and, and grasp and begin to dive in to letting the Holy Spirit work in your life and, and, and discover how powerful the Holy Spirit can be in our lives. And ask God, ask God to fill you fresh and to fill you new and to restore that, that vibrant Holy Spirit at work in you each and every day. There will be exciting times exciting times uh, to come for the church amen why don't you why don't you pray with me god we thank you for the gift of the holy spirit we thank you that it's your desire to give the holy spirit to each one of us that you do not leave us alone to, to do this work on our own, but you, you've sent the Advocate, the Comforter. So God, we just humble ourselves today to pray and say, Lord, fill us with Your Holy Spirit. Let us not grieve the Holy Spirit. Let, let us not be confused about the Spirit's work, but God, let us walk in harmony with Your Word and let us walk in harmony with the Holy Spirit whom You've sent to each believer to be our power, to be our guide, to be our advocate. In all this, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. These words from this song as we go are just, a, I think, a beautiful benediction for us um, just to cry out. So I'm going to ask you to sing these words with us that as we go, our, that Your Spirit, God, will go before us And as we go, may we follow where you lead. Sing with us. As we go, may your Spirit go before us. As we go, may we follow where you lead. May we live what we have learned, share the message we have heard, and be a light unto the world as we go. As we go, may your spirit go before us. As we go, may we follow where you May we live what we have learned, share the message we have heard, and be a light into the world as we go. And be a light into the world as we go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen. Have a great week and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday.